All right, guys, so I'm going to be going over two of each of these problems so you guys know how to do these, know how to complete them. It should be helpful for your test. So I'll start with adding and subtracting scientific notation. This is a topic that we do tend to struggle with, so let's take a look. So we're going to be adding these two. So when you have addition and subtraction of scientific notation, you have to get the exponents to become the same. So 5 to 8, we need to get three more. So if I'm adding three, I need to move the decimal place over three to the left. So when you add, you move left. When you subtract, you move right. And we'll see that in other cases as well. So that would give me 5.34 plus 0 0.00245. When I add those together, I get 5.34245, and then times 10 to the eighth power. They both now have the same exponents. 5 plus 3 is 8. We have the 8 originally, so we're going to leave it as that. Let's look at the thousand one. We have subtractions. We have negative exponents. So negative ones are bigger ones, so we want to get this one to become negative 1. To become negative 1, I am going to add 2 to the exponent. When I add 2, I move it over 2. So now we have 8.9 minus 0 0.0573. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 8.8427. And then they're both times 10 to the negative first. That's a multiplication sign. So I would leave it as that. So that's my addition and subtraction. Every single time you are going to move the smaller of the exponents to become the bigger one. So that means you have to add to the exponent and move your decimal place to the left as many as you add. Now let's move on to multiplying and dividing scientific notation. So when I multiply, I have to multiply my two big numbers. So my 8.18 and my 2.2. If I multiply 8.18 times 2.02, I get 16.5236. And then we add our exponents. So negative six and negative five gives me negative 11. This number has to be between 1 and 10, so I have to move the decimal place over to the left. We saw before when you move it to the left, you add 1. When you add 1, I get 1.65236 times 10, I hate when that happens, times 10 to the negative 10th power. And that would be my final answer. So we have to be careful that we have our number of front or factor between 1 and 10. Let's take a look at a division problem. So division, we're going to divide our factors. So these numbers right here. So we'll do 4.98 divided by 8.9, which gives me 0.559. 6, I'll say around there. And then we take 14 and subtract it from 9. Subtract 9 from it. And we get times 10 to the 5th. We can't have this be less than 1, so we move it to the right. And like I showed you before, if you move to the right, you subtract 1. So you get 5.596 times 10 to the 4th power. So those are our scientific notations. It's all about memorizing the rules and being able to apply them properly. All right, now we move on to our exponents. So product rule and power rule. So here, I'll change the color. Here, we want to do everything in the parentheses first and then combine it with this. So if I do in the parentheses, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 m to the first to the third, because there's that imaginary one, is m to the third, m to the fourth to the third, n, excuse me, n to the fourth to the third is n to the twelfth. Now I want to multiply it with 3m squared n to the third, 
So we combine our 3 and our 8, we multiply and we get 24. And we add our combined like terms. So m to the third and m squared gives me m to the fifth. n to the twelfth and n to the third give me n to the fifteenth. So like I said before, it is about memorizing your rules. When we do with our outer exponent, we multiply the exponents. When we have just our numbers with our product rule, we have to add the exponents. Same thing here, we're gonna do this first. So four to the fourth, let's put that in our calculator. Four times four times four times four, you get 256. X to the eighth, Y to the 16th. Now let's combine 256 times three, gives me 768, I'll put it down here. Now we have X to the eighth, X, and x squared, so that's 9, 10, 11, x to the 11th. Then we have 16 and 4, which gives me 20, and our 1, so it gives me 21. You can't forget about that imaginary 1 on this x and this y. Let's try to take a look at one where we have to use our product rule first. All right, this is one where we have to use our product rule, so we have to do the inside first. So two times four is eight. Do the inside. M to the fourth and M gives me M to the fifth. And then N squared's alone, so we'll just write it. Now we're gonna do eight to the third. So we take our calculator out. Eight times, eight times eight. So we get five, 12. Five times three is 15. 2 times 3 is 6. And that would be my final answer. Do the inside first, then the outside. Always look for your parentheses first. See on the inside if you can do anything. If you can't, we'll just use our power rule normally. If not, we have to use the product rule inside and then use our power rule. And on classroom, for our exponent rule uh, review, I have all the rules on the first slide if you need them. And then I just exited on accident. All right, so now we're on quotient rule negative exponent. So for these problems, we have to simplify what we can simplify. So eight divided by four gives me two. All right, good to go. Make sure we line it up, y to the third and y to the negative fourth. So we do y to the three minus a negative four Negative and negative become a positive, so that becomes 2y to the seventh. Then we do this one. Negative three minus negative two, so I can write that. Minus two, excuse me, minus two is negative five. We can't have a negative exponent, so we have to bring it down to the denominator. So keep the 2y to the seventh on top, bring the x to the bottom and make it positive. This one, we do five and 25, that'll become one fifth. I usually don't write the one, but I'll do it for right now. Negative two minus a negative one. So negative two minus a negative one becomes a plus. So negative two plus one is negative one. Five minus four is positive one. Like I said in class, we're professionals now. We're not gonna put the little one on top, it's implied. We can't have a negative exponent, so we bring it down to the denominator. I'm going to get rid of this one because it's also implied. If you keep it, I'm not going to be that picky. I just don't want it in the exponent. And we'll have 5u. So we brought it down to the denominator and made it positive. Make sure you realize that 5 and 25, you could take divide out a 5 from both of them, and that's where I get the 1 fifth, and then use our subtraction rules. All right, zero rule combo of all. All right, this looks a little crazy, so we're going to get rid of anything to the zero power. So this will go away, and that's all. So 15 times three is 45. X to the fourth and X squared, the atom gives me X to the sixth. Y squared and Y to the fourth give me Y to the sixth. 
over 5x to the 8th. 45 divided by 5 is 9 x to the 6 minus 8, 6 minus 8 is negative 2, y to the 6th. We can't have a negative exponent, so we'll have 9y to the 6th over x to the 2nd power. So I combine what I could do, 15 times 3 is 45, 4 and 2 give me 6, 2 and 4 give me 6, leave the 5 and the 8x to the 8th. 45 divided by 5 is 9. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. y to the 6. Bring the x squared to the denominator. This was a crazy one. All in class, we were like, oh, it's not too bad. So we get rid of the x to the 0. So do the inside parentheses on top. 3 times 4 is 12. y to the 5th and y to the 3rd is y to the 8th. z to the 3rd and z to the 5th is z to the 8th and square it, so it becomes 144 because 12 squared. Multiply the exponents and put it all over 5x to the third, y to the negative first. All right, combine like terms. So y to the 16th and y to the negative first. 16 minus negative one becomes a plus. So we have y to the 17th, z to the 16th, and we're gonna leave the 5x to the third on the denominator. None of them are negative, so we're just gonna leave them all there. I'm gonna try to find one that had everything to the zero power. Hmm, here that was the first one. So one like this, because everything's to the zero power, we get rid of this, and we're left with just this over here. Can't have a negative exponent. So we're going to bring the x to the negative 4th to the denominator and make it positive. Anytime you bring it to the denominator, it makes it positive. All right, finally, I want to look at a area problem. So this was the bigger of the area ones. So we're going to do the inside first. So 3, x to the 4th and x 3rd gives me x to the 7th. Why? Now square, because the square on the outside. So 3 squared is 9, x to the 14th, y squared, because we multiply the exponents. Now a lot of us in class were like, oh, we're done. No, because that's just the side length. That's just one of the sides. So to find the area, we need to find one of the sides times the other. If this is 9x to the 14th, y squared, so is this one. So I can square it. So I'll have 9x to the 14th, y squared squared. Anytime you have an area problem, you're going to simplify your side length and then square it. So 9 squared is 81. Multiply the exponents, so x to the 28th, y to the 4th would be my final answer. I don't know why that always happens to me. And that would be my final answer. Let's look at some volume. So for this volume problem, this is a big one, so let's take a look. So 3 squared becomes 9. a squared squared is a to the 4th. This is b to the 8th. Combine what we can. We have 9. a to the 4th, and a gives me a to the 5th. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, b to the 14th. All right, that's my side length. So now I need a cube it because it's a volume of a cube. Volume is three times. The cube would be three times. So let's do nine times nine times nine, which gives me 729. A to the 15th and 14 times three gives me B to the 42nd. So a lot of these are the same processes over and over again. It's just memorizing our rules. That's a big component here, scientific notation rules, exponent rules. So I definitely want you to try the ones I put on Classroom. And if you have any questions, please email me. I have extra help on Wednesday as well. All right, guys.